In this video, I'm going to give you a super basic introduction into object-oriented programming with JavaScript. So in JavaScript, I can create an object out of thin air. So let's say I have a player object for a game that I'm making. Uh, they could have a name, uh, maybe waffles and number of lives, maybe three. And this is just some data stored in an object. It's a dictionary, we have keys and values. And I could represent this as a JSON string and pass this over an HTTP request. But since this is an object, I can also add a function as one of the values. So I could have a function called say something, uh, and I'll just have this console log hello. And if I were to execute this function, it would say hello. And there's nothing crazy going on here. I've just created a simple object. And this isn't really object-oriented programming at this moment. Let's think about some behavior that I want to add to this player. Maybe I want the player to be able to die. So I have a function called die, and I'm gonna be able to pass in a player object in here. And this will decrement the player.lives by one. Uh, and maybe I'll actually put in a little bit more logic here. So now if I pass in a player and it has zero lives already, I can't have less lives, so we do nothing. And if there are some lives remaining, then take away a life and just console log out how many lives are left. And then this could be run in this way. So call die pass in player and let's just see what happens there. So the player waffles dies, it had three lives, now waffles has two lives left, so that functionality works. But this functionality of dying is completely separate from the actual player object itself. But if we were to take this function and put it in to the object, so attach it as a method on the object, then now I'm calling player.die and this data structure that contains all of the values for my player also contains the functionality that goes along with my player. It's the combination of this state and behavior in a single object that makes this object oriented. And I'm not going to pass in the player object anymore because it's just going to access the player object directly from within the method. So there we go. Waffle still has two lives left. And I can replace player inside of the function with this because this will evaluate to be the player object since I'm calling it as a method on the player object. And the functionality should still be exactly the same. I start with three lives and then Waffles dies and Waffles now has two lives. But I could also go a step further here and let's say I declare this function outside of the player object again. And remember that I'm using this now, so it's not tightly coupled to the player object. It just has to be called in a way that this evaluates to an object that has a name and a lives property. So I have a player here and I'm gonna clean this up a bit. Uh, so player is waffles, lives three. Um, and I could have a player two called uh, pancakes with again, three lives. Uh, and I can attach this method here to both of them. And now I have two completely separate objects, separate players that have this die method. So I could console log uh, player1.name and player, actually it's just player, not player1, uh, lives. So I'm gonna console log out the first player and the second player's name and lives. And before I do that, I'm gonna call die on the first player. So the first player should lose a life and then we'll be able to see what the state is of both the players after that. So Waffles loses a life, so Waffles now has two lives, but Pancake still has three lives. So I have two completely separate objects, different pieces of state, but they share this method that will access their state individually. So using this inside of the function, I get to reuse this function with multiple objects. And this isn't really a new concept to anyone that's programmed in JavaScript before. So if I created some arrays here, so let's say I have array one, one, two, three, and then array two, which maybe is a, b, c, 
These are both objects, they contain some state. The array one contains these values, the array two contains these values. And if I wanna do something with this array, I can call one of the many methods that an array has. So for example, if I just wanted to put another number in array one, I can call the push method, which will add, in this case, the number four to array one. And this only adds this number to the first array, array two doesn't get that number, but the functionality, what is inside of the push method just exists in one place. And then that functionality is shared amongst every array that is created in JavaScript. And again, it's coupling this state and behavior into a single object that makes this object oriented. So this is just a very small part of object oriented programming. There are many, many concepts that you should learn and different ways of writing things, different syntaxes that will allow you to achieve the same outcome. So for example, with this player, we could rewrite this. And now it's using the class syntax instead of just creating object literals. And the behavior should be exactly the same as before, but it's using this different syntax. The end result is basically the same, but the code is much different. And I'm not gonna go into details about what this code does right now. I'll save that for another video. But my point here is, this is the introduction to OOP. And there are many more different concepts and different syntaxes for achieving the outcome you want in your code.